Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and this is our sixth video in a series of six videos um, showcasing some Christmas cards that you can make easily and have fun um, gifting to your family and friends this season. This is our last one, and this one is fairly easy, so it should go pretty quickly. Um, I have a selection of seven different printed papers out here and they are all reasonably close to the same um, family of colors as you can see I'm using kind of some vintage Christmas colors not the traditional bright red and green but some more muted tones um, and they're all going to work together really really nicely to form our Christmas tree and then I have a piece of just some paper that has some musical notes on it that's going to be our background page our background paper excuse me I also have a tiny bit of shimmer that's going to make our star and a scrap of some wood pattern paper that's going to make our tree stump so if you'll gather those things um, you'll be ready to go I'm also going to use our border maker system I'm using a cartridge that's called clouds that came out um, I don't know when this came out actually probably a year or maybe even two years ago this was part of a one of the baby collections um, it was released at the same time as one of the baby collections it's one of my favorite kind of all-purpose um, patterns because it's just an outline that go an edge that goes along the edge of my of my um, paper you can use some anything that's similar to this so there are some other border makers that will just give you an edge on your paper that's what you want to do this project okay so um, let me just move a couple of these pieces out of the way and we will um, get started with our punching and then we'll trim our base paper when we are ready to go ahead and um, and adhere everything. So like I said, we're gonna use our border maker system almost exclusively today. We are gonna use the trimmer just a little bit, but not as much as you might think. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to, um, I have these arranged in a specific order, and um, let me just tell you I, my thought process. I tried to balance the colors so that the red, anything that had red on it was separated by another, sort of more neutral color and my greens were separated and you know patterns were separated so that you have it in kind of a balanced um, or a balanced organization to it and then um, you'll notice that this particular sheet ha says Merry Christmas across it so if you're going to use any kind of a paper that has words um, or a directional specific paper you'll want to make sure that you are uh, punching your your um, edge on the bottom of whatever that vertical directional paper pattern is so I'm just going to make sure that I put my paper that says Merry Christmas in this way so that I can make sure and punch on the bottom edge of the Merry Christmas so bear with me we're gonna just punch all seven of these then we're going to trim off the punched edge. Moving my trash can just a little bit closer because we're going to have a fair bit to toss as we go here. I'm just going to make a pile of my papers in the order that I want them over here on the side. You can make three cards with one of the strips that we're putting together here. So if you are making multiple cards for people or if you're looking for a pattern of, um, of cards, a pattern of Christmas cards that is going to make multiple cards because you have lots of people you're gifting holiday cards to, this is a great one because you can punch all of these and then get three cards from the one um, the one group of punched pieces that you're making so it's relatively more um, more fast to put this one together is what I'm trying to say not saying it very well but that's what I'm trying to say okay I 
I hope that you're all ready for Thanksgiving. I know it's kind of hard to plan for Christmas when Thanksgiving hasn't even quite gotten here yet. But, you know, if, you're, if you are planning to make your cards, then it is a good idea to get started early because I don't like a stressed December. I don't know about you guys, but I try hard to get as much done before December even gets here as I can because then my holiday month is so much sweeter with my family when I'm not stressed. So I hope that you're able to do that too. And that's kind of why I'm bringing you all of these in November so that you can have them to get started whenever you're ready. Please don't think that I have all of mine done. I sure don't. But I, um, I have some great helpers. My husband likes to come down here and keep me company when I'm scrapping in the family room. And so he'll come down and say, what can I help with? Especially this time of year. And I have some old card kits that I put together that were not used. And so he's been sitting here, bless his heart, and putting together Christmas cards while he watches his um, Star Wars stuff on Disney Channel and other places, other other series that he enjoys, and uh, or listening to a book. He just started a Brandon Sanderson's book that he's really enjoying, and uh, so sometimes he'll listen to that, and he'll just sit here and put together cards while I'm scrapping. It's really nice. <laughs> Stuff we can do together, right? All right, so now I have all my pieces punched. I'm just gonna set my border maker system to the side and grab my trimmer real quick. Now we're going to go ahead and take each of these that we've punched and we're going to um, trim them at one and a half inches. So what that means is the, out, the tallest edge of the pattern that you have punched that needs to be one and a half inches. Okay, so we're gonna have each one of these and then you can set the, set the rest of that piece aside, but each one needs to be one and a half inches. And just kind of pile them up, one on top of each other. This card is so cute when it's all completed and um, really goes together relatively quickly as I mentioned before and so it makes it look like you've spent a really long time creating something special just for your friends and family. Just, you know, and we all want them to feel special but sometimes it's also nice if they can feel special and it doesn't take us as long, right? So, one and a half inches. Okay, so done with that, but in just in the interest of time, grab your scrap of um, wood paper and I'm just going to cut a piece that is three quarters of an inch wide. Um, actually, no, I'm going to go an inch wide and we'll just see if we need all that whole inch. This particular scrap I'm using has kind of a deckled or mottled edge on the, on the sides, um, which I like, but it's up to you how you want to, um, how you want your tree stump to be. I also, um, have my wood grain going kind of a weird direction, but that's okay. Um, all right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to assemble these. I'm gonna have you flip them over and um, we're going to take just this first piece. This is gonna be my top piece. And if you have one with words on it, 
I would recommend that you make that the one on the bottom. So let me see how best it is to do this. Okay, so I'm use, I'm, I want my Merry Christmas piece to be the one that is the widest section of my Christmas tree so that I have, the, have a greater opportunity to see my words, although some of it's going to get covered up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to okay so I have mine kind of stacked backwards but I want to put my Merry Christmas on top of the one that's going to be just above it and I'm going to glue it down about a half an inch from the straight edge at the top okay so the bottom piece is on top. I'm going to add some repositionable adhesive so I can rub off any portion of it that is not where I need it to be. Just all the way across, kind of in varying places, because you don't know exactly where you're going to be cutting it. And then I want this to be approximately a half an inch it's okay if your widths are variable, but it's good to try to make them as close to the same as you can, okay? So, that being said, now I'm going to flip this over. I'm gonna put some more adhesive on the top of that next layer. See how I can't really see my Merry Christmas because it's mostly covered, but that's okay. I'm not gonna stress about that. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, hang on just a second. I forgot which order I'm doing this in. Mm. You know what, I'm gonna put these in, I'm just gonna shuffle these just a little bit just to make this easier on myself. There, okay, so. I'm going to turn them this way so my edge is towards the top and I'm just going to adhere them every half an inch layering them down. I'm sorry if that's confusing. Keep wanting to turn that around. Um, that one's pretty. I think the hardest. The hardest part of this particular design is choosing your papers because you know when you have when you have these beautiful double-sided papers with beautiful designs on both sides it can really be tough to decide which ones work best together you can just make all different kinds all different variations of your patterns. All right, now that I have all of these sections put together, what I'm gonna do is grab my trimmer again, and I'm going to cut these in four inch sections. So you're going to have three four inch sections. Don't worry if all of your edges don't meet exactly. It is okay. Don't stress about that, okay? So we want four inches. We're just going to make two cuts so that you have three four inch pieces, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pencil. I'm going to flip my design over. Using my grid on my mat, I'm going to find the center of each one. So here's the center piece. 
and because this is the back, you'll notice I flipped it over, I'm just making a really bold mark right in the center at two inches because that's going to be my, my um, cutting point where I'm going to line up my angle okay, for my tree. So two inches on each one of those. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this mark up on my cutting line and line the lower edge by, by my, my um, patterned edge that I punched. I'm going to use that corner on the, my cutting line and the center point I just marked on my cutting line. Make an adjustment there. Okay. And I'm just going to cut and then I'm going to turn it and use the other edge next to the punched line and my center that I marked down here. And there's our tree. All right. So you can do that very easily. Do all three even while you are got your trimmer out. Oh, don't be in a hurry like I was because I just did that slightly off. My tree's going to have a little bit of a wonky edge, but that's okay. I am okay with that. So maybe go a little slower just so you don't have that same thing happen to you. And we've got our three trees. Now I'm going to grab my open star punch. I'm not sure if this one's still available with CM, um, but it is a cool one. If you have it in your stash, it's a great one to use. I'm just going to go ahead and punch that star from in here. You'll notice we get two stars with this punch. That's what I love it um, love it most for because it's two for one. Or you could use another punch. Okay, this punch is um, one that I've used in some of our other my other card demonstrations. This is part of the mini trio um, that I know for sure is still available and it also creates a really cute little star. So a little bit different shaped star, more like a starfish, but it does um, it does work for this project and others. So something to think about. I'm going to grab my card base over here. There we go. And I am going to need my trimmer one more time because I just remembered we never cut our base material. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to use this music paper and I want my notes to be vertical so I want to make sure that I'm cutting vertically a four and a quarter piece and then I'm going to turn that and make it five and a half so it covers my whole base of my card. Okay. Then I'm going to take my tree, actually I'm going to take my tree stump and see how there's a cute flat on the back? That would make a cute tree stump too. So it just depends on your paper, what you got. So I'm going to not put that right on the edge, but I am going to center it about an eighth of an inch from the edge down here. Okay, so uh, there's my tree stump. Now I'm going to, oh, this brings up a good point. So I, the top of my tree here is just barely hanging on and that's because when you use your repositional and you don't put it all the way across, sometimes you have places where it's not adhered as well. So I'm just going to take a minute and fix my tree. 
you might have that happen to you too so just keep it in mind and I'm just gonna match if that happens to you just match your edges and put it right back on and you're good okay so then I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive and run it all the way down both not all the way down but down the majority of both sides and a little bit in the middle there going to center my cute little tree over my tree stump. Don't get it too high because you want room for your star up there on top. So just like so, right? Then I'm going to use a little tiny foam square for my star. I only need one tiny little one. So this is a good um, good project for using up scraps. It's a good project for um, as far as it not using up a ton of materials that you otherwise would want for something else. There you go. There is, here's our previous sample that I made and here is the one we just did. And you've got two more waiting in the wings that will go together in a flash. Super. All right. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this series and I hope that you spent some time making some special um, cards for loved ones this season and um, I'll be coming to you in future videos with some wonderful holiday layouts for your 12 by 12 album for all of your holiday photos and um, as you can see I'm getting ready here in my with my icy blue nail polish <laughs> and my Mickey's Mickey and Minnie we're taking the family to um, Disney for the for a holiday weekend and um, gonna have some fun out there for Christmas so um, so that's why I have those but um, in the meantime I hope that you have a nice and wonderful Thanksgiving coming up and um, and that you enjoy spending some time making these greetings for your loved ones. And as always, I wish you many more creative moments. Thanks so much. You have a great day.